Nicole and I are living with a family in Sedeira, a small town of about 7,000 people located in the northwest of Spain. The city of Sedeira would prove to be one of the most beautiful natural landscapes Nicole and I would visit. The city is part of the Spanish community of Galicia, located in the Spanish province of A Coruña. Galicians have a rich human history dating back as far as the Middle Paleolithic period. Our time in Sedera would only be a few weeks long, and during that time, we would experience a wide range of weather patterns and challenges, as six of us woofers, including the owners, would stay at Campo de Medio in this tiny cottage. It was wet, humid, and cold, but we made the best of it. All right, this is their greenhouse, and you can see how they just got a little shelf, and they put some hinges on it, some door hinges and some glass and they just close it up and when we wake up in the morning time it's like a hot box it's just full of sweat there's vapor all over the place and all the plants that normally couldn't grow in this colder time of the late spring early summer like basil like tomatoes like cilantro parsley they're growing in the greenhouse just fine yesterday we transplanted a bunch of cilantro and parsley from the greenhouse into the garden. So those of you who don't have the money or the room for a huge greenhouse, you can have a cute little potting bench, cute little potting section in your yard and build something like this that serves the purpose of the greenhouse on a small scale. Okay, three seeds we're gonna plant this morning are these pole beans. Second crop we're planting today is spinach. Spinach does very well in the summer here and we're gonna plant all these little spinach seeds. Third crop is corn. One thing that's tough with this family here at Campo de Medio is that their budget for gardening is not immense. They have a tight budget for gardening. So they don't have bags and bags and pallets and pallets of soil and compost and rock dust and amendments and coconut core and things like that. They do have the ocean, which is right behind us. So they could go and get some seaweed like this and they could make a really good homegrown compost out of seaweed. This is sea lettuce. I was actually eating this last night, fresh out of the ocean. And we're gonna incorporate a little bit of this into the soil, just kind of work it in a little bit. And all those ocean minerals and phytonutrients in the seaweed is gonna really make this soil nutritious and alive. Gonna give these seeds a jump start as they start to grow. We're gonna kind of do a mixture of some of the compost they have left over from a previous season. And we're gonna mix it 50-50 with the native clay that they have an abundance of outside, which is the brown stuff. It's Jose and Marion who run this property and this morning Jose was telling me it's okay to plant the seeds in the 100% clay. So I'm gonna take 50% the compost, 50% the clay, make a mixture and put the seeds in that mixture.
Side note, the clay here is way different than the clay in the Sonoran Desert where I'm from. It's even leaving like a residue on my hand that's like sparkly, almost like it has hints of silver or gold in the clay. Maybe that means it's much more mineral rich because it's right by the ocean. As you guys can see, we have made the greenhouse look a lot better. We've got the plants that were looking like a little bit of misfits. We kind of gave them better homes with some fresh compost. We combined all the compost that was just sitting and not being used with the native clay. So now it's like a 50-50 mix, much fluffier, much lighter, better for growing seeds in. And I'm doing the spinach here. I got about four spinach seeds per cube and I'm just laying them on the top. So you guys can see I'll do the last four with you. I'm just doing a few spinaches there, a few spinaches there. They're kind of stuck together because they're kind of old seeds. Hopefully they'll germinate. And some right here. All I'm gonna do, all I'm gonna do now is just kind of do a little bit of a push and then a little bit of a flick. So push, and a flick and I, I've always told you guys that my rule for planting seeds is you put the seed under the ground the same diameter as the size it is. So since these seeds are little itty bitty, we're just putting them barely under the soil. All right, I'm gonna finish with the spinach seeds and flip it around and show you guys what Nicole's doing with the corn and the beans. I have two different types of beans in these two trays and then I also got some corn. So with the corn, I already have it all planted except for these four. So I'm just gonna just lightly push it down just a little bit like that and then cover some dirt over it. These are the two different types of beans that I'm planting. All right, so the black beans are going in this tray and then the pinto beans are going in this tray. So with the black beans, again, with the, they're about the same size as the corn, so we're just gonna lightly push it down and cover it up with dirt. So the pinto beans are going in this one, and just like the corn, but a little bit bigger, so we're just gonna push it down and cover it with dirt. Just like that. Grow it. Don't GMO it. Yeah, this is looking so much better now. Looks like a legit planting station and greenhouse. Grow, babies, grow. Hey Arizona, it's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete here in North Spain, a town called Sedera. And I want you guys to see how easy it is to dig a hole here in North Spain. Done. So, tell me what this is and what's in it. Um, it's a curry I made up. Um, it's got coconut milk, um, turmeric, garlic, onion, uh, potato, bell peppers. Uh, a bunch of basil, Indian basil. I don't know what else. Uh, maybe some cumin, mm -hmm. salt, pepper, and a lot of chili pepper. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, and it's underneath there's uh, cauliflower and broccoli too. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Think about the look. Looks good. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite parts of woofing was the food. 
Nicole and I were exposed to many different styles of cooking and preparing food from all over the world. We would hike daily and found an abundance of blackberries, stinging nettle, nasturtiums, and even wild forest strawberries like these. The food we cooked and ate was generally made with local ingredients and local flavors such as these delicious vegan empanadas. If you subscribe and continue watching our adventures, you will see that none of the families we woofed with, except in Kauai, were growing 100% of their own food. It's always a treat to drive a car in a foreign country. Nicole handled it like a boss perfectly driving this stick shift <laughs> through the intense right. rains of Galicia. What's your next play, Kahlo? Do you have any greens? Come on, greens, go. Back on the farm in the middle, the rain poured seemingly with no end in sight. We did basic farm jobs like weeding, cleaning, planting, dividing, and even tried to build Marion and Jose a new compost pile, which would give them black soil to mix into their garden. I have never been to a place on the planet that rains more than Sidera. The water was everywhere, in the heavens, on the earth, and everywhere in between. Alright guys, a little iPhone update. It's been about five days now, and for those entire five days it has rained almost 24-7. So with the absence of hot days, rain most of the day, we still have germination happening on our seeds. So let's do a little update. Check out the corn. First of all, the corn's all up. The beans are up. Over here in the corner, we have more of the corn that was planted in pretty much 100% clay. This uh, Galician clay here in Sedera. And even right here, we have two of the little spinach guys that are up right here. Germination, life, we did it. Jake Mace out. If heaven exists, I hope I get to spend even a small part of my eternity in a natural landscape like Sedera. I want to thank the Wolfing Program for showing me parts of Spain I may never have visited otherwise. On this day, we saw the ruins of the old defense outlook and fort called Castillo de la Concepción. We made woofer friends, Sam and Melissa, and as usual, the drone, as well as nature, brought us together. For me, if there was a word to describe Galicia, it would be enchanted. I could live here. A gardener living amongst the forests of eucalyptus and clear, peaceful ocean waters. I probably wouldn't be vegan, but instead live off the land, combining fruit trees, gardening, herbs, and the seaweed fish, clams and mussels of the ocean as my food source. <laughs> what just happened?
The woofing work for Mary and Jose lasted about five to six hours each weekday. In the mornings before work and during our days off, Nicole and I would get out to make memories in as many of the pristine natural locations as we could. We made it to the secret beach. Yes, the water was cold, really cold. I harnessed my inner polar bear and went for a swim. There's nothing better for your nervous system and emotional well-being than a good cold ocean swim. I heard someone say that Spain consumes more fish and seafood annually than any other country except Japan, and that if you want to have the best seafood in all of Spain, you go to Galicia. Nicole and I definitely felt this vibe as the ocean was wild, and you got the sense that this was a fisherman's town. I grew up in a fisherman's town of Steveston, British Columbia, and it was amazing how much Sedera reminded me of Vancouver back home. On our final day, Nicole and I explored the Castillo de la Concepcion and the Playa de las Sonrisas. We felt like we can see the end of the earth, and it turns out for centuries, much of the world thought this was just that. Galicia was known in olden times as the end of the world. We went through one more negative ion filled Tai Chi and yoga session and loaded up again as our host Marion was gracious enough to drive us to the airport for our journey entirely across Spain to the east coast, warmer weather, warmer ocean waters, and an entirely different region called Catalonia. These are called orios. They are granaries holding food for cows, pigs, and chickens and are typically seen in the Northwest Iberian Peninsula. Built in wood or stone, raised from the ground by pillars ending with flat support stones called statal stones to prevent access by rodents and water damage. Ventilation is allowed by the slits in the walls and these orios were found everywhere around Sedera and for me, became the symbol of humanity in Galicia. The rain poured again as we made our way to A Coruña. We found a cute little health food store with vegan essentials and loaded up on a plane for the trip to Barcelona.